amplifiers are all around us. For example, there are a few amplifiers in, say, a Bluetooth speaker. A preamplifier is used to amplify the small analog output of a digital analog converter, like the thing we did in Lab 3, to give a voltage signal output with sufficient magnitude. Subsequently, booster and power amplifiers are used to drive the speakers. This lab involves the building of a basic voltage amplifier with negative feedback op amp as shown in the highlighted orange enclosure. To provide a context, another optional circuit that is only for bonus credits is also shown here, highlighted in blue, for the demonstration purpose. It is a resistive transimpedance amplifier that converts the signal current output of a photodiode to a voltage signal. This signal is then coupled into the voltage amplifier, and both together becomes a photoreceiver, that is, an optical sensor. The purpose is to demonstrate an example application of the negative feedback voltage amplifier, which is the main circuit of this lab assignment. Lastly, the third part, highlighted in green, is the connection of the AD2 to the circuit so that measurements can be made. The voltage amplifier can be wired in less than 10 steps. The learning topics of this lab assignment are about the amplifier responses. By the end of the assignment, you will gain a perspective on the concepts listed here. This is a preview of the concepts. Consider an amplification process. This is the measurement result with the AD2. Yellow trace is scope 1, which measures the input. Blue trace is scope 2, the output. At low frequency, the amplification works as expected. However, as the input signal frequency increases, the measurements show that the amplifier cannot respond as fast or as instantaneous as the square edge change of the input. This phenomenon is called roll-off, and at the frequency where the output amplitude is only one half of itself at low frequency, it is called 3 dB bandwidth. Minus 3 dB on the log scale is about one half. Hence, 3 dB bandwidth means the frequency limit where its gain is only one half of the designed value. The idea of this lab assignment is to test how well the amplifier responds versus frequency. It is analogous to say, testing a car acceleration. We cannot test how well a car performs by just driving a car slowly in the normal condition. The car must be pushed to its limit, by finding out, say, how many seconds it takes for the car to go from 0 to 60 miles an hour. This same idea is applied to the amplifier in this lab assignment, by testing its limit with respect to frequency. This is the other side of the coin of the same concept earlier. It measures how fast the amplifier ramps in response to a square edge, or mathematically called the heavy sidestep function input. The rate of response is called the slew rate. The roll-off behavior is shown clearly with this measurement. Another test input function is the impulse function, which is a square pulse here. It is also known as a representative of the Dirac function if the duration goes to zero. The output is called an impulse response. Frequency and impulse responses are related. One is called time domain response, and the other is called frequency domain response. If you have not learned Bode plot, you will learn it in this assignment. This one shows the impulse and frequency response as a function of the amplifier gain. The meaning and implication of the responses studied above can be seen by using an application example. The application is to use the voltage amplifier to amplify the output of an transimpedance amplifier of a photodiode, which is a light sensor device. It is the reverse of the LED. The LED converts a current into light. The photodiode converts light into a current. This circuit is not required in this lab assignment, it is for bonus only. The two circuits put together to make a unit called photoreceiver, as it receives optical signals, whether from sensing or communications. For example, there is a photoreceiver at the final receiving end of every optical fiber spanning the global internet. The follows are some examples of this circuit.
A LED is used to test the photo receiver. The AD2 output show the voltage driving the LED with scope 1, the yellow trace. Light from the LED is received by the photodiode and the receiver gives the blue trace, scope 2. This is a LiDAR demonstration. A red laser beam is shown on a ceiling with a certain backscattering distribution as shown. The photo receiver has a collection lens to focus the backscattered light. The photo receiver signal, as measured by AD2 scope 2, the blue trace, shows the response when the laser is on or off. The LiDAR signal calculation shows that the photo receiver response is within the ballpark as specified by the manufacturer, and typical for most silicon photodiodes. The LiDAR shown previously was for continuous wave and the receiver frequency response was not as important. Here, the demonstration related to lab assignment 6 is shown. The signal here is modulated, and hence frequency response matters. High frequency response means higher signaling or communication rates, and vice versa. The LED transmitter is driven by a simulated signal and its light output is coupled to the nearby photodiode. A small enclosure enhances the coupling between the LED and the photodiode. The photoreceiver output shows 100 Hz square pulse that simulates a message, which is modulated at 9.3 kHz square wave. The Fourier spectrum shows the carrier modulation peak. The photoreceiver signal is input into the bandpass demodulator circuit. The bottom line is, in this lab assignment, we will learn that the response behavior of an amplifier is the essence of its performance. The concept applies not only for amplification, but virtually all types of signal processing. That's the takeaway of all this work. This is the outline of a lab assignment report. It has several sections as shown. Each section contains several subsections, each consists one or more tasks. A task can be a question, a calculation, or assignment to build circuits, or do measurements and demonstrations of the circuits. To complete a lab assignment, do every task in the lab report outline. There is one-to-one -one matching between the list of tasks, and the lab guide app items. Part introduction is a background review about the concept of signals, which are what the circuits of this lab are designed for, that is, amplifiers to amplify signals. If you have taken or are taking a course on signal analysis, you may be quite familiar with the materials, thus, treat them as a refresher. An AC voltage such as from the wall plug varies as a function of time. DC voltages from batteries, DC adapters, are constant and do not vary versus time. This exercise involves generating common waveforms to be used later for experiments. If you are interested in hands-on work, 
you can use the AD2 or the instruments in the lab. This will be done again later with real measurements of the circuits. Hence, it is fine if you wish to do virtual instrumentation in this step for a concept review. Waveform buttons. The last one is sinusoidal, but plotted in the complex plane. There are two amplitudes for the reference signal. Frequency control slider. Amplitude control slider in unit of dB relative to the reference. Amplitude control slider in unit volt. DC level shift in unit of volt. The DC shift is more evident by disabling the auto scale button on the scope. Phase slider. Phase is relative to the reference signal. Varying the time scale of the scope display. Varying the vertical scale of the scope display. Auto scale should be off. Varying the start time of a scope sweep. Peak to peak amplitude is displayed. Relative phase is displayed. Sinusoidal signal can also displayed by its complex representative. Our body generates many AC signals with complex waveforms. The lab guide has linked to a few. You can search on YouTube for similar videos, using keywords shown in the follow. The previous step shows that the human body has a lot of electrical AC signals. But those are largely involuntary or unconscious. Here, we will generate a voluntary physical stimulus, that is, something under our control, and which can be converted into a very familiar AC voltage signal, with the aid of a computer microphone.
Please follow the instruction below, record the sound, process it, and put your experimental results in your lab report. Sound data can be imported from files or recorded with a microphone. Select microphone, sampling rate. Whistle and record. Check the recording. Inspect and select a subset of the data. Use span center and span width. A very narrow time window is selected. The sound wave data of 17 millisecond interval is displayed in a large window. A larger 130 millisecond interval is displayed. The recorded whistling of that 130 millisecond interval is played. A longer interval is selected for Fourier analysis. The power spectrum shows a narrow frequency band around 1461.4 Hz. In other words, almost a pure sinusoidal signal. The whistling spectrum is displayed on the linear scale. If we can make a sound and use the computer to convert it to a voltage waveform, can the reverse be done? This step involves generating a sine wave mathematically, and making a sound with it. Use this simple app to generate three sinusoidal signals and their sounds to include in your report. 